Hello, I'm Stephen Fry, and I have adored gadgets ever since I was knee-high to a space hopper. My obsession runs deep. When I was 15, I laid out a fortune on the first new Polaroid camera. And 40 years later, I still have a desperate need to have the latest phone, alarm clock, egg timer as soon as they're launched, if not before. Gadgets entertain us. They connect us. They educate us, they impress us, and of course, sometimes they frustrate us. But whichever way you look at them, they make the world a, a much, much better, and dare I say, happier place. So, come into my world as I, along with some of my friends, reveal a feast of magnificent gadgets that will provide for a fun and stress-free existence. I could certainly fall asleep. Some will be from the future. Oh, my God. Uh, Some from the past. This here is the first iPod. <laughs> Some are gadgets you can only dream of owning. Oh, completely silent. It's electric. And simple gizmos you can buy today that will change the way you live your life tomorrow. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's vibrating. Particularly. And every week I'm going to be creating my very own super gadget. The ultimate gadget of its kind. Well, I'll be giving it a go. Oh, oh no! Consider me your humble servant, your knight in crumpled corduroy, your gadget man. Tonight, I'll be looking at how gadgets can take the misery out of your daily commute. Ah, oh, it's taking me to a happy place. Jonathan Ross will help me test some of the more imaginative modes of transport that could help you weave your way to work. No one will forget seeing us in this, though, Stephen. They won't. And I'll be attempting to create a super taxi, something that will never be caught in a traffic jam again. Ah, uh, four comms of daily life. Dot com. Compete, compute, and worst of all, commute. The daily grind from home to work, finding somewhere to park through streets crammed with traffic, jostling through pavements crammed with pedestrians, and then having to make the same journey back to home. There must be a better solution. Whoa. Something like this electric bike, maybe. Whoa. This is the Yike bike, so-called because you keep saying yikes. It comes from New Zealand, has a radius of about six miles, and it's rather good fun once you get used to it. it takes about 15 minutes of practice. If you're brave enough, it has a top speed of 14 miles per hour. It's made from carbon fiber, but it isn't exactly cheap to buy. At least it's cheap to run, but about a penny per mile. Oh, it's a great thing about the Yike bike is once you get a fit of the wobbles, you just have to stand up. That's a great safety feature. And talking of safety, you may wonder why I'm not wearing a Bradley Wiggins approved cycle helmet. Well, I'm wearing this collar instead. It's not just something to keep me warm. If you get an accident like that. Oh my God. Are you all right? How do you feel? I'm fine. It's a loud bang, but it's good. My head's protected. We're both wearing the Hovding inflatable helmet. It deploys in just a tenth of a second, rather like a car airbag, when it detects sudden movements. But you can only use it once. It seems pretty expensive, but surely a small price to pay for avoiding the disaster of helmet hair. Would you recommend one of these? I would, it's yes, very effective. It's a peculiar look, I have to say. <laughs> As much as I've enjoyed the Yike bike, it doesn't exactly represent the blissful state of nirvana that I'd like to achieve on my commute. Oh. I have the urge to invent a better way of traveling to work myself, but there are some obvious hurdles to negotiate. Well, whichever you choose, you're going to run into the terrible snarl up that is a city's traffic at commuting time. It occurred to me that maybe some other conveyance might be more appropriate. I happen to drive a London taxi cab. I adore it. 
And taxi drivers, as we know, are always very reluctant to go over the river. But I wondered if they might not be more willing to go on the river. How about pimping a taxi cab such that it becomes an amphibious vehicle? My crack team of gadget man boffins are beavering away in their shed as I speak, trying to turn a two and a half ton taxi into a boat. Something capable of dodging all the traffic jams by simply taking to the nearest river. If they can make it work, it will be the ultimate gadget commuting vehicle. Drivers aren't the only victims of rush hour. I'm now going to turn my attention to another form of commuting used by three million of us every day. The train. Travelling by train in busy periods is painful in every way. The first is the temperature. Cramped carriages can be stiflingly hot, which is where this air-conditioned jacket from Japan comes in. Inside, the switch, which I'm going to turn on. Oh, can, you zip it up? can you feel it? Yeah, I feel like cold air blowing down the bottom half of my body. Yeah? Yeah. Its built-in fans expel 20 litres of sweaty commuting air a second. It looks a bit North Korean dictator style, but it's, it's actually not bad. It's a perfectly good blue. And if you like it so much, I'll give it to you. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> oh, thank you. It's yours. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> That's the oppressive heat dealt with then. My next bugbear on this carriage is noise, racket, din. Yes, this is one of the curses of commuting, having to sit next to someone who's got tish tish leaky earphones. Ugh. Thankfully, I have a wonderful gadget that completely transports you away from the hells of commuting, making the journey the most enjoyable hour of your day. Ah, oh, it's taken me to a happy place. It's a much nicer environment than the, the rather sprawling suburbs of South London. And what's more, I can even take off these visors here, and now you can see nothing of what I can see. Everybody else is having to look at South London. I have the joy of a little film here. It's rather sweet. It's a sheepdog trial. Oh, bless you. So I'm in my own little bubble. Not only do these specs play video, but they can also connect to the internet via Wi-Fi. They run on the Android operating system, so you can choose from thousands of apps to download and while away the drudgery of the 742 from Clapham Junction. I have to say, this is rather fun. I don't know if one looks anything other than a supreme twit in it, but does that matter? But I must say, I'm rather tempted. Hello, real world. Another way of making commuting more bearable is to share the pain with a friend. And I can't think of anyone more suitable than my techno-savvy chum, Jonathan Ross. Well met, Jonathan. Stephen. Meet uh, Gadget Man. Gadget Man? You're sporting the beard, I notice now, as well. <laughs> yeah, I copied that from you. Well, this makes us even better team, Gadget Man and Bobbin. This is my first gadget. See if you, you can break it. It's an unbreakable umbrella. Well, that's... I bet yours isn't. Mine is broken. Look yeah, at this. there you are. Already, this bit's come off here. Well, this one, it is used by the Philippine Secret Service as a weapon. Well, it is completely unbreakable. Yeah, I, d I very much doubt that's true. I don't, I don't. But have a go. Look, it's got a hole in it already. <laughs> right, that's I didn't say that part of it would be unbreakable. Well, you have to... Sp OK. <laughs> Let's get amongst this, then. <laughs> oh, oh, Christ. Well, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst gadget I've ever been given. And I've been given some terrible gadgets. All right. Well, I've got some other things for you to try. I should hope Believe so. Believe you me. Because <laughs> it's going to be a very short uh, career as gadget man, if that's the best you can do. He really is incorrigible. But he'll be useful for testing my next rush hour buster. A new fully electric vehicle that claims to always find a way through traffic. It also claims to be a two-seater. 
I like the look of this. Do you like it? Would you like to be my passenger? I would love to be your passenger. It's incredible, isn't it? It's like a little it's, concept car. It's the Renault Twizy. So where shall I sit in the back? Um, in, in the back, I'm afraid. Are you going to be able to get in there? I can try. Have a go. Well, the first time you've said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mama. I'll, I'll hold you up. Oh, here. thank you. He's going to do it. He's going to do I know he's going to do it. Oh. I'm going to do it. If I... No, I tell you. You know what we need to do? Surely the seat vents fall. Leg him back. Yeah, good, good point. Uh, uh, yes. You've probably done better than I can do. Not elegant. Uh, 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 I feel... Uh, I like the tightness. <laughs> it feels weird, soaringly safe. We the are. Twizy doesn't have any windows. In parts of Europe, that means it's classified as a glorified moped and can be driven by 16-year-olds. In the UK, it just means you get wet. You almost feel like that with cars like this, I think they should have a sort of ramp where you can drive down into the back compartment of tube trains oh, to get you into town and then just drive out. Brilliant. Because it's small enough, yeah. just a separate ramp. Ah, oh, we got looked at there. Hello. Hello. Electric. Not polluting. Oh. Yes, as with all electric vehicles, there's no internal combustion chucking out any fumes. No one will forget seeing us in this, though, Stephen. They won't. It's like a kinder surprise when we climb out. <laughs> <laughs> the Twizy runs on a lithium-ion battery, basically a larger version of what's in your mobile phone, and it takes three and a half hours to recharge. Hello. Ever seen one of these before? What do you reckon? Yeah. It's pretty good. It can go 50. Yeah. Would you like a race? <laughs> he shut his window on us. He shut yeah. his window on us. One of its great benefits is that it is road tax exempt, but Jonathan has spotted a fatal flaw. Here's the problem with this car. We are still stuck in traffic. We are very much. So it doesn't help. Sure, we're not polluting, but we're not really getting anywhere any faster. I'm impressed. I've got it. You've oh, well, got it. I'm sort of... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm afraid I've come over all John Wayne. <laughs> Look at the size of it. Oh, and this is how you plug it in, you see? Look at that. Oh, that's fabulous. It's as simple as that. That's a proper English plug as well. Yeah. Maybe American or European one. <laughs> Three prongs. There you go. It's a, it's, it was a fun ride, though. Well, if you're still up for it, we've got a couple of other things you to know, I was, I was born up for testing. Let's go. We start with these motorised roller skates. They're not that much smaller than the car we were both <laughs> just <laughs> both of us managed to get into. Dare you? I, I, I'll, I'll give it a try. Oh, I might be careful. Need... There's a helmet oh. here because I do think I might I'm need not some assistance. Be... They're so tight. It's That's very what... clever, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Helmet on. Okay. I might need a bit of assistance. Gonna... Yeah. Well done. Ah. Oh. Well done. Let's try and go around this loop here. Yeah. So one in front of the other, I guess. That's right. OK. Let's just see what happens. Let's see what happens. Turn this on. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, yes. Check it out. Oh, oh. Not... I'm not feeling any weight on you, on my arm. You're, you look as if you're almost controlling completely on your own. You're really doing this. I could I'm let go now. I'm like, no, to. you're not going to let go now. I'm not going to. If we got married in our later years, this is what we'd be like. <laughs> I'm going through the fountain. No, that... I really wouldn't I'm going through that. the fountain. I think... I'm taking you with me. <laughs> <laughs> you bugger. You damn nearly okay. did. Well, Shall we go for a seat? Let's do that. My stuntman didn't really do these skates justice. They can do 10 miles an hour, so could actually speed up your walk to work by three times. Well, I, I feel that you earn at least 30% of the praise there. Yeah. That was quite something. I this mean, is must... fun, though. I mean, it's I think fun, yeah. It's fun. If you could get some real speed on them, I can imagine it would be like a sport. Yeah. Like a you really... Could, you could do a hockey version. Or like a kind of motorsport, but just men... Yeah. ..rollable. Yeah. But a fun experience. Like so many things you've shown me over the years, <laughs> something I wouldn't have done on my own. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say You that. lead the nation yeah. in uh, strange uh, pursuits. Well, are you prepared to try one more mode uh, of transport? I'm absolutely. Now, what, what possibly can you inflict <laughs> on me that won't be fun? Let's go for it. 
These electric scooters are called trikes. As you can see, they are basically tricycles. They're balanced enough to stand up on their own. They've got power packs. Wow. And you just stand on it, press the green button for power. There's a little throttle here. And as long as you just keep your weight slightly forward, the front wheel won't skid too much, especially on these... So it these works like a scooter, leads. then, just yeah, this accelerator there? Yeah, that's right. Oh, we blimey! We're off. Wait for me! Come follow! Oh. The trikes are designed in California and can go as fast as 18 miles an hour. <laughs> Very good fun. Oh, I'll ride this one home. These are fun. The frames cleverly flex in corners to stop you from toppling over. I feel like skiing, slalom. Not that I know. <laughs> A huge benefit is that, unlike a bike, you don't arrive to work hot and sweaty. Well, hello there. Hello. It's lunchtime. Oh, fantastic. Could you look stable our horses, Patrick, if you would? <sighs> so, what do you reckon of that? I loved it. I love them. That's the best thing you had me do today. Actually, they fold up, so they make a perfect commuter vehicle, don't they? Pop it into your office afterwards, get yeah. it out, put it in the back of the car. Fant really Absolutely. good fun, though. Absolutely. Well, um, you go and have lunch. Thank you. And I'm off, to, uh, I'm off to drive a cab into the water. Has it come to that? Truly amphibious, yeah. A truly amphibious cab. Well, I wish you the very best of Thank luck. Thank you very much. OK, I'll, I'll have As a chip always... in your honour. <laughs> Thank you. It was a Lovely pleasure. to see you. See you. Thank you. This isn't just my idea of the perfect commuting vehicle, but it's a world first, too. A London taxi made seaworthy. I hope. I don't mind telling you, I'm more than a little apprehensive as to how it's all going to turn out. If it goes wrong, I shall be mildly moist, to say the least. Time for my team to unveil the beast. I just hope they hadn't turned my plans for a super commuter into some sort of foul-looking dinghy. Oh, my God, I'm so nervous. I love this thing like a Are baby. Are you ready? Just about. OK? Yeah. Oh, it's still a cab. Still a cab. But with many additional oh. benefits. <laughs> it's extraordinary. The body has been completely sealed to waterproof it, and running boards full of foam have been attached to add buoyancy and stop the cab rocking from side to side in the water. The usual engine remains up front to drive the wheels, but now, poking out of the boot, is a propeller attached to a 10-horsepower electric outboard motor, controlled by a hand throttle inside. See you, boys. <laughs> None of the modifications stop it being road legal, although the extras have added weight and put the suspension under rather a lot of strain. Oh, that was a, that was a dodgy one. That brought down, brought down my visor. The noises. It's not actually anything serious. It's. It's the foam and an aluminium base, apparently, from all those slung. So that's causing um, a slightly noisier and bumpier ride than I would be used to. A little unnerving, considering I'm about to turn off the traffic-clogged roads and see if my amphicab will let me take a shortcut down the Thames. It's hard to imagine how this could float, I have to say. <laughs> it takes all my faith in technologists and engineers to entrust myself to this on water. It's just wrong. We've all seen those films. I feel like Chuck Yeager must have felt before he first broke the speed of sound in one of his jets. The right stuff. They say you always feel nervous your first time. Too blooming right you do. Oh, my goodness. This is extraordinary. The propeller's going. I'm afloat in a cab. This is wonderful. It's not very fast. Oh, there we go. 
Captain Bird's Fry is making steady, graceful progress. Nothing can possibly go wrong. Should I be worried about the smoke? It appears the propeller has caught on something as the motor has stopped. I am stricken. And rather embarrassingly, I'm just being overtaken by a duck. Help! Help! The aquatic division of my gadget man boffins immediately leapt into action to tow me to safety. I do what I'd call Jonathan. The magic of Bluetooth. <laughs> Hello, Jonathan. I am in the Thames on a floating amphibious cab. I like the sound of it. It sounds like the most flamboyant end to a stag night ever. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> the Hangover Part 3, the London story. I'm now emerald with envy. <laughs> Well, you, you had your fun on your on your lovely tricycle, but um, anyway, I will see you Wednesday night and Thursday night with any luck. I hope you're still with us. Uh, indeed. <laughs> I might be wet and covered in seaweed. All right. You dry up. Okay, lots of love. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care. After 25 minutes repair work, the propeller is fixed. For hire. Marvelous. With no traffic lights, speed cameras, or congestion, I'm free to worry about more important things. My in-car espresso machine. That'll stop one falling asleep at the wheel. Mmm, tasty. There's a serious point here that my Amphicab is making. With rush hours crippling much of the country into gridlock, opening up a major transportation route like a river, something that runs through the heart of most of our cities, might not be such a mad concept. And the idea that I could approach a bank and then engage the engine and just drive off is almost incredible. Just needs a pair of wings and it's chitty chitty bang bang. But maybe I'll save that for another day. Hello, I'm Stephen Fry, and I have adored gadgets ever since I was knee-high to a space hopper. My obsession runs deep. When I was 15, I laid out a fortune on the first new Polaroid camera. And 40 years later, I still have a desperate need to have the latest phone, alarm clock, egg timer as soon as they're launched, if not before. Gadgets entertain us. They connect us. They educate us, they impress us, and of course, sometimes they frustrate us. But whichever way you look at them, they make the world a, a much, much better, and dare I say, happier place. So, come into my world as I, along with some of my friends, reveal a feast of magnificent gadgets that will provide for a fun and stress-free existence. I could certainly fall asleep. Some will be from the future. Oh, my God. Uh, Some from the past. This here is the first iPod. <laughs> Some are gadgets you can only dream of owning. Oh, completely silent. It's electric. And simple gizmos you can buy today that will change the way you live your life tomorrow. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's vibrating. It's tickly. And every week I'm going to be creating my very own super gadget. The ultimate gadget of its kind. Well, I'll be giving it a go. Oh, no! 
Consider me your humble servant, your knight in crumpled corduroy, your gadget man. Tonight on Gadget Man, it's all about food. I swear to you, I've never had a better sausage ever. <laughs> I'll be showing you how technology can make the weekly shop a pleasurable experience. That's my boy. I'll be revealing the magnificent cooking devices that every kitchen should be armed with. Hmm. Look at that. And I'll be showcasing some quite extraordinary gadgetry to wow my friends. Oh as I throw the ultimate Gadget Man dinner party. Oh, beautiful! Food, glorious food. What is there more handsome, as the great Lionel Bart once wrote? Thank you, Everett. And it's certainly true that when it's served up to you on a plate like this, oh, there's nothing more wonderful. But for most of us, even a spoiled pig like me, there's the great faff of choosing how to buy your food and how to prepare it. It's not easy. It's one of the curses of the 21st century. I don't think she noticed. Hmm. I'm spending the day preparing for a spectacular dinner party. First, some tech to make my supermarket shop a little more fun. Let's start with the smarter cart only robot shopping trolley in the world. Good boy, come on. Its onboard camera tracks your body shape, allowing the trolley to automatically follow you so you don't have to push it. And as it will know the layout of the store better than you will, it can also guide you like a supermarket sat-nav. That's it, you come here. Turn round. That's an obedient car, stop. It's the first time this prototype has ever been outside of America, and I suspect it has a touch of jet lag. Either that or it fancies me. Yes. One day, these carts will connect directly to your internet fridge, creating a shopping list that's displayed on the monitor. Scan an item, and it gets automatically ticked off the list. Six pack of sausages. It recognises them. Genius. A few years before it'll catch on, but uh, it's on its way. Come with me. Come along. So do you think this thing will catch on? I'd like to see how it would work in a really busy shop, say, at yeah. Christmas time. That would be interesting. That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. Because technology hasn't yet caught up with the human ability to dodge and weave. It's bad enough with people yeah. controlling it, let, let alone something. Could be like something a scene of bumper else. cars yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing a gadgety dinner party later and I'll need wine, but the choice is overwhelming. Thankfully, I have this Wine Find app on hand to make a recommendation. Meats, beef, steak. What's it recommending? Margot, Malbec, Cabernet Sauvignon, Chilean Merlot. I don't think I've ever had Chilean Merlot, so let's, let's take their advice. In you go. Um, there'll be at least one of us, so I might need two bottles. Um, there we go. Follow me. Time to pay. Checking out is going to get a lot quicker as more and more phones become equipped with so-called near-field communication. Just wave them at a contactless reader and the money leaves your account. Oh, that's Thank so cool, you. isn't it? And your receipt. Thank, Thank you very much. much indeed. And I can press that button to make it wider. Slip it over my shoulder. That's great. And go to the car. And how about this as the ultimate gadget man shopping car? It's on sale next year and is called the Lightning. There we go. Ah. Well, it's time to move on. This is rather swish, isn't it? Let's start her up. Oh, completely silent. It's electric.
Look out, look out, look out. Vehicle reversing, vehicle reversing. Drive. Now, I know not everyone loves technology as much as I do. I've known Simon Hopkinson, one of our country's greatest food writers, for 20 years. He hates anything modern. But I reckon some of the clever gizmos I'm considering using for my dinner party might just change his mind. No, I hate that. I knew you would. <laughs> I knew it would just turn you, turn you absolutely livid with fury. Nor did he like the machine that makes fresh pasta in 15 minutes. So I, I pull out this... Oh! It's alive. And the result is spaghetti. The electric pizza oven with a traditional rotating stone base. Or this clever little garlic chopper. Big bits, small bits. You're not impressed, are you? And when it came to finally slicing an onion... We have a race, now. Infuriatingly, his old-fashioned knife skills beat the pull-cord spinning blades of my veggie chop. Even this touchscreen hob, which automatically senses a pan and heats the area accordingly, failed to win him over. Yeah, I'm a gas man. Yeah. And I like, I like seeing the flame. Then, against all odds, I had a breakthrough. What you do is you actually screw this in. Like oh, I like so. this. Ooh. You're there. I think I'm there, aren't yeah. I? And then we pull it out. Hold. That's it. Oh. Ooh. Look, look Ooh, what comes chunks. out. It's whole it's chunks. Chunk. It's the whole <laughs> chunking thing. Gosh. Isn't that brilliant? And you can push through. I like that. Hear that? He liked it. Although Simon reserved his biggest enthusiasm of the day for a rather retro runner bean slicer, produced from his very own back pocket. Oh, it winds up. spring, yeah. And then it holds it, and as you push through... Oh, my goodness. ..it takes off the strings. And they are lovely, because runner beans need to be thin. I shall definitely be using that at tonight's soiree. If it's mild, I might even be tempted to barbecue. We Brits do host over 120 million a year, after all. But I don't want any old thing. I want something that will get my guests gawping. So I've asked three pals to test some of the most innovative on the market. Alex is using the barbecue, which cooks everything on rotating skewers. Switch the power on and it spins around, does all the cooking for you, so no more flipping burgers. That is pretty lazy, to be honest. Vanessa is using the big green egg. It's actually a modern take on a 3,000-year-old Chinese design, relying on an airtight cooking chamber with a very precise temperature control. So it's made um, out of ceramic clay and gets up to 650 Celsius inside. Nice. Or what you can do is moderate the temperature with these vents, that one there and the one at the bottom. Yeah. And then you can, I don't know, smoke some meat for, say, nine hours or something, because it stays hot for 10 to 12 hours. Wow, OK. So when yours has died, a death... <laughs> You'll still be cooking. Mine's still going. Okay. Yeah. But mine's gas. DJ is using the Blacktop 360 party grill. Not only is it a gas barbecue, but it's also a griddle and built-in deep-fat fryer. With this, you've got the optimum temperature, or you can change it, whatever it is. Uh, you're cooking for as long as you want, or until the gas runs out. I've also given this lot the iGrill app. It connects to a meat thermometer via Bluetooth, alerting you when the food is perfectly Ooh, cooked. The food's actually ready. So, after the cooking and the tasting, which was our favourite? I think if you're a serious barbecue, you would go for this one. But I think in terms of money and... Value for money, I see. And, and portability. Speed, yeah, then yeah. I think maybe, maybe the gas one. Yeah. yeah, but I think we have a clear winner, really, in that, in terms of practical usage for, for the average Briton, but this for, in terms of the, the sort of uh, Margot from The Good Life, who I wanted to so, show yeah. off objects. I think if you're serious about the yeah. if, if we weren't in a recession, then we could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I think on reflection that a barbecue is just too much hassle, besides the weather's turning decidedly chilly. But I happen to know that there are gadgets out there which can create genuine excitement in the kitchen. 
So it's back to Gadget Man HQ. It's me. To start planning my spectacular dinner party. And here are my sous chefs. Gadgets that blend, gadgets that slice, gadgets that dice, gadgets that peel, gadgets that cook, gadgets that do just about everything. All I have to do is press a few buttons. Bliss. In just a couple of hours, some friends will be round for dinner, and I've got some truly spectacular surprises lined up for them. For now, it's time to cook, and everything will be prepared using my pick of the best tasty tech. We'll have soup for starters, but I won't actually be cooking it. I'll be cheating by using the Vitamix 500, a so-called performance blender. Quite noisy. There's a two-horsepower motor in there, driving the blades at 240 miles per hour. There's no need to boil the veg for hours on end, as the friction of the blades is enough to cook them. Oh, look at that. You can see the steam. And that's warm soup. Yes, it may cost £600, and you may be able to get a can of soup for, um, well, about 80 pence. But I'm a gadget lover, not an accountant. For the main course, we'll be having steak, cooked in the sous vide style. After vacuum packing the meat, it's cooked in a water bath at a precise 56.5 degrees and can be left for hours on end. None of the juices or nutrients can escape, so the flavour is sensational. That is just about the most succulent steak I've ever tasted. It genuinely is. But and maybe it needs a soup saw of salt, a suspicion of moutard, and perhaps more chips, definitely more chips. Making gadget chips begins with the rotato peeler. It's three times quicker than using a knife. Then it's a retro chopper, followed by this health-conscious fryer. It needs just a teaspoon of oil combined with hot air to make supposedly light and fluffy chips in 25 minutes. I'll let my guests be the judge of that. And here they are. The delightful comedian Joe Brand. Exceptionally well. The delectable mathematician Carol Forderman. <laughs> it's cold out there. And the devilish illusionist Darren Brown. See Thanks for coming along. Yeah, no, it's colder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, oh. Sorry about that. I don't have a gadget to make it warmer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Here we this. are. Wow. We start with a traditional aperitif, served in a very untraditional way. Here's a straw. <laughs> yeah. It's called le waf. So, Joe, all you do is breathe in the cloud in there. So, okay. pop my straw in. Pop as far in as you can and just have a, have a suck. Solid end. Oh, my God. And you have a go, Carol? Into the cloud. <coughs> yeah. That happened the first time. It always happens the first time. Embarrassing. <laughs> and again. <laughs> Off you go. I think I ought to have a go as it well. Sounds amazing. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's brandy in that. Well, that's, oh, what, that's lovely. It uses ultrasound, would you believe, to turn a spirit into cloud. And the spirit, in fact, is Scotch whiskey. Is it really? Yeah. I didn't that, think it was like whiskey. There. Can you get them in Tesco's? Not yet. Right. But, you know, we like to think of ourselves here at Gadget Man as early adopters. And uh, <laughs> what we try today, the world tries next year. Yes. Do you get drunk on it, then? Yes, you don't burn off... The, it doesn't burn off the alcohol. Okay. <laughs> in order to face my soup, you may need a little more, I fear. That's fantastic. Yeah. Time for the first course. The soup made with my high-speed blender. Now, you ingest this orally, do we, this one? Yes, yes. you do. <laughs> ingest it <laughs> by mouth. It's carrot and courgette. Oh, yes, it is. Well, it's very tasty. Oh, it's mm. Not very hot, though. It's not very hot, I have to admit. Mmm, <laughs> a lukewarm reception. So I decide to unveil the first of my surprises. <laughs> wine. Why not wine? Wine. Um, yes, yes, I've got a corkscrew in here somewhere. Um, Darren, I think you'll enjoy this. If I, um, there's somewhere where to find a corkscrew. Oh, there we go. Ah. Oh. This actually <laughs> is oh, wow. a corkscrew. Can't get it in a drawer, though, can you? <laughs> it took sculptor Rob Higgs three years to build this, the world's biggest bottle opener. Isn't it something? It's made from 380 different bronze parts and yours to buy for just £150,000. Something so 
touchingly human about. Isn't it? In fact, we go to such great lengths to achieve... That's the joke ma of it. It is a same. deliberate magic sort of artistic yeah. joke, that it is... Yeah. On the one hand, it's a waste of ingenuity, but on the other hand, it's a celebration of it. Yeah, that's, that whole thing dropped, don't worry, that's a good okay. thing. Yeah. <laughs> It's now going into... It's the going in, yeah. Of course, we're going into the bottle. I have got an emergency stop button here, which is a health and safety feature. It's never been used yet. So oh, God, right. okay. The cork. It's you coming out, the cork is... The cork oh, is coming out. Oh, perfect. Oh, look, oh, the whole thing's lifting up. The whole thing... That just to lift the cork. Yeah, well, and, and, so and you'll see that more than more than oh, lifting the cork. Oh, it's deposited the cork in the little bowl. Deposited the cork into the bowl, very neat and tidy. <laughs> but now we're about suddenly. Meanwhile, the, the, this bell shows that the second phase is about to be entered into. So keep winding. I love this so much. <gasps> that's all right. That's a wait. And now, it's all being done by clockwork now. Oh, so lovely. I kept thinking, no, it's not going to work, yeah. it's not going to work. It does. <laughs> That's all done in. That's... Oh, that is beautiful. A glass of wine. That's incredible. I can't believe I've never had this in my life. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't buy one for an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> now the main course, the sous vide steak and the air fryer chips. Well, it smells fantastic, Steve. Well, that's very sweet of you. Oh, um, gosh. Ah, there we go. Chips and Stop. beans. I did the beans because I had a lovely bean slicing gadget. Um, <laughs> so I couldn't resist having beans. Um, I'll just pour myself some wine using this gizmo here. Because yeah. it's a recently opened bottle of wine with an extraordinary corkscrew. Oh, I just this, love that you know, to chambre, as it were, to, to sort of uh, let the air into the wine <laughs> so that it isn't so sharp and tight. This, this does exactly that. Battery driven. No, no, it's, it's no, it's just, a, it's just, um, it's just gravity. It's great, isn't it? Strange um, and it, and it, um, it tastes a lot nicer once it's been through one of those. The uh, steak is fab. For the sous vide, I'll defer to Darren, who it transpires is a bit of a fan. Sous vide, literally under vacuum. Um, it's a tub of water. You set it to the temperature that matches the inside of whatever it is you want to cook when it's at its perfectly cooked state. So the inside yeah. of a steak is 56.5 degrees. Do you know that? So you that? set it to that. <laughs> I, I just I love it. I, so you set it to that, and the result is a perfect steak every time. Oh, so I hope you enjoy it. It's nice. My verdict is it's a lovely meal. Good. And it's so nice for a change to see runner beans that are even in length. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, the chips. It is perfect. Mm. The chips, which are not quite as crisp as I'd hoped. They taste the glass, deep fried. They taste deep fried. That's the amazing thing. They taste as if they're really quite oily almost. Yeah, they it's don't just taste one, like those horrible one one teaspoon. Chip things. No point having a chip if you don't think you're going to get heart disease. <laughs> 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 Pudding next, which my guests will have to help me make. We put in sugar, cream, some vanilla essence. Yep, that's good. OK, so it's pudding time. Ready? To me, to me, to me. <laughs> <laughs> Chucking the ball around for 20 minutes cools the ingredients sufficiently to make ice cream. Oh, beautiful ice cream. Real ice cream. Ice cream. Mm. Wow. Oh, that that makes make ice cream. Yeah. It's a nice cream maker, and and it keeps you fit, and and you don't need any electricity. There's just, no there's no electricity at all. Just your own really... calories, which is rather handy. <laughs> but ice cream on its own is rather dull, and I've got something that will make your pudding raw. Come with me. You have to all of us. Yes, come oh. with me. All of you. It's the world's first chocolate printer. Yes. Wow. And this is actually going to be with any luck my face. Can you see it now? <laughs> oh. Designed by scientists from the University of Exeter, it can scan any image and then print it using a syringe full of melted chocolate. Domestic versions should be on sale in the next few years. I reckon you're only up to about 30 calories, so... <laughs> <laughs> Through the magic of television, we have prepared four of them. Yeah. Not one. Oh. And um, they are... Three of them are highly triumphant. One is possibly not as complimentary as it ought to be. It just <laughs> went a little awry. Miss Brand, I don't think that's bad at all. Oh, no, that's oh, OK. That's really good, isn't it? Lovely, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Mr. Brown. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's oh. astonishing. It's really good. That's You're not just really yourself. Good. It really is impressive. <laughs> Carol, I'm re I don't know what went wrong. The most beautiful person in the room. And that's what happened. I'm so sorry. I'm, the name is lovely, be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's very accurate. <laughs> I will um, serve those, I think, in the conservatory. And now for my postprandial pièce de la résistance, the next best thing to a teleporter. Oh, oh my God! That's... Welcome to Saigon, ladies and gentlemen, a fine, bustling city all around us. Woo! It's looking at me weird. <laughs> this is my igloo dome. It links five HD projectors to create a 360 cinema with specially made footage transporting us to other countries. Underwater. Oh, wow. Is it? Even out of this world. Just incredible. What's your impression of Evie? It's been amazing. The food's been terrific. Well, I'm so thrilled yeah. because I can't tell you how much I've been worrying myself over whether or not you would find all these gadgets absurd and that they didn't work and that <laughs> everything was ridiculous, but that you've taken them in exactly the spirit in which I think gadgets should be taken. That they are, on the one hand, useful, yes, but on the other, more important hand, Somehow they engage you, they're fun, they make you smile. They are fun. They're actually, uh, they're sort of joyful, they're a kind of celebration somehow. That it's okay to find the gadget funny and useful at the same time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank it's you all so much time. for coming. Thank you. do have my face. You can eat my Hello, I'm Stephen Fry, and I have adored gadgets ever since I was knee-high to a space hopper. Gadgets entertain us. They connect us. They educate us. They impress us. And, of course, sometimes they frustrate us. But whichever way you look at them, they make the world a, a much, much better, and dare I say, happier place. So, come into my world as I, along with some of my friends, reveal a feast of magnificent gadgets that will provide for a fun and stress-free existence. Ah, oh, it's taking me to a happy place. Some will be from the future. Oh, my God! Some from the past. And how long have I got to stay in here for? About four hours. Some are gadgets you can only dream of owning. That's incredible and simple gizmos you can buy today that will change the way you live your life tomorrow. Marvellous. And every week I'm going to be creating my very own super gadget, the ultimate gadget of its kind. Well, I'll be giving it a go. Oh! Oh, no! Consider me your humble servant, your knight in crumpled corduroy, your gadget man. Tonight, it's all about the gadgets that can make work quicker, easier, and most importantly, more fun. <laughs> Britain's Hello. most famous Hello. boss, Lord Sugar, helps me find the fastest smartphone. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! You have sent it. Brilliant. Well done. And I attempt to build the ultimate skiving gadget, a robot look-alike that will do my work for me. It'll either be triumph or I'll be laughed off the stage. Well, there's no doubt that gadgets have revolutionised our domestic chores. These little things can shuffle around all day cleaning up my crumbs. But when it comes to the nine-to-five job, the jury's still out as to whether technology is freeing us or enslaving us. Gadgets make work inescapable. Emails and stress can now arrive 24 hours a day. But I think we're missing a trick. Gadgets shouldn't be making work less enjoyable. They should be making work more enjoyable. To help me test the technology that can make work fun, I'm off to the gang at the Innocent Drinks Company. They are my gadget guinea pigs. <laughs> Cheers, 
Hello. Hello. I can see you've all got computers and you tap away every day, probably like most people in the country. But I've got some devices that may well save you time and trouble and put you ahead of your deadly rival's guilt. We've got some interesting things in here, which I hope you'll enjoy. Let's have a look. We'll start with the Live Scribe pen. I think you're going to adore this. Have a go with it. Just play and see what happens. An infrared camera in the tip tracks the pen's movement, while a microphone inside records every sound. Got to sync now. Once your meeting is over, everything can be uploaded to your computer. Oh OK. Wow. wow. That's pretty cool. Did it work? Yeah. What's your view of it? So it's time. Yeah. So you're not having to like retype everything since already there. So yeah. yeah. It feels like a pen. It's quite easy to use and lightweight as well. Brilliant. I think we can definitely count that as a success. Well done. Smelly. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I won't <laughs> worry about what you've written. But <laughs> <laughs> well. Now think of all the wasted minutes spent waiting for the office kettle to boil. This deluxe Danish coffee machine should put paid to that. I can order myself a cappuccino. Let's hope it works. Start now. It connects to an iPhone via Wi-Fi, allows you to order a drink remotely, and takes 15 seconds to make a cup. Oh, I had a good beat. Got to make sure there's a glass there. Yes, there is a glass there. <laughs> Look at it. There it is. It's magic. It's working. Mm. That's good. That's very good, actually. That frees up an extra few minutes to browse some of your favourite websites. But if you find yourself straying into dodgy territory, then the USB stealth switch is just what you need. A single tap subtly hides the web page you're looking at when the boss walks by. What's that again? Sorry. What? Oh, yes, good spreadsheet. Uh, I like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just for a minute, I thought this was a no. very erotic vision. But it was, I was mistaken. You know, Cameron is an anagram of romance. Mm -hmm. No accidents, is it? Perfect. Meant mm. to be. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well done. Carry on. It even removes the evidence from the toolbar. I think you need to work on your leg action a bit, though. Yeah, it's quite jerky, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but perhaps the ultimate office gadget is this. It's part pillow, part hat. The product of a Spanish design studio, it lets you have a power nap at your desk. You look great, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, you can put your hands there on, on top of your head and just... <laughs> and how cool is that? You look like a strange Stephen Moffat-inspired Doctor Who monster, but it is comfortable. Shutting off the outside world for 20 minutes can apparently increase productivity by 30%. It's a gadget that truly makes the desk job more pleasurable. My work here is done. But who needs an office when gadgets make it so easy to work from home? There's one thing in particular I rely on, Skype. Why bother traipsing into town to meet my agent when I can video conference for free? Hello, Christian, how are you? I'm good, Stephen, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. I just wanted to call you quickly so that you could tell me what my upcoming diary looks like. You're gonna finish the play in February, then we've got two more documentaries, another session of QI, yeah. Then after that, we've got the Hobbit reshoots. We're going to put in the uh, Golden Joystick Awards, too. Okay. Don't, don't yes. forget about that. Yeah. And then another major documentary. Plus, you have to write your book. Whew. With at least three engagements every day, I really do need a gadget that can lend a helping hand. Let's get to work. Hey, there's one. Mm, that gives me an idea. Call me crazy, but I rather like the idea of having a sort of life-size, lifelike, robotic version of myself, a kind of humanoid doppelganger. It's the ultimate skiving gadget when you think about it. So, I've asked the Gadget Man Robotics Division to create a fake fry, something that is so advanced I can control it from home and send it to work instead. It's a job for special effects expert Simon Rose, who's worked on films like Star Wars and took a cast of my face for The Hobbit. I hope he errs on the side of flattery. Now, there's only one person I know who's as big a gadget fan as me, and I'm off to his private office to see if he'll be impressed by some of my business gadgets. One name looms large when you think of work and technology. 
a man whose company helped fuel the boom in home computing in Britain, a man whose company became the head supplier of set-top boxes in Europe, a man also who thought there was no future in the iPod. Peer of the realm, no less. Lord Sugar will see me now. Oh, your lordship. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for giving us your time. Good. The first things I want Alan Sugar to help me test are a couple of the latest smartphones, the sort of things that have become an essential part of this workaholic's life. I now work 16 hours a day because this thing is beside me all the time. Yeah. And so at night, relaxing, watching TV at home, you're forever getting ping, ding, 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 yeah. ding like this. Yeah. My wife is, put that bloody thing down, <laughs> will you? So who are you talking to this time of night? Who are you, de who are you dealing with this time? Now, here's the funny bit. She's now got a Samsung Note, and she's worse than me. Oh, that's yeah, hilarious. Yeah, she's playing around, and she's talking to all the grandchildren and all that yeah. stuff. Now, Lord Sugar, I've got the latest Nokia phone. Nokia is the second biggest mobile manufacturer in the, in the world. And this is the 920. In fact, it's the first one in Britain. And this is the new Windows 8. Really? So, um, just have a play with it, actually. I mean, you can see, as you slide up, it's, everything's tile-based. So there are tiles oh, that you yes. contact Tiles, with. yeah. So once you've signed in... They've already got a blooming advert in. They're sponsored by, the, uh, <laughs> by a, a drinks manufacturer. <laughs> they don't mess about, They do don't, they? do they? I, on the other hand, I have this, which is the Samsung Notebook 2. And what I thought we'd do is just try to see how easy it is to use without having used before, because these days you don't expect to use a manual, you expect things to be intuitive and natural. So we're going to have a race and see who can download Twitter, take a picture and tweet it first. It's the perfect test of each phone's usability. Right, Twitter, there we are. Lord Sugar sneakily takes the lead by accessing Twitter directly from his web browser. Ah, I see, you're cheating. No, I'm not cheating. You're supposed to download the official app. That's oh, the I don't point. know how to do that. That's I what don't... I've been doing. Oh, right. Well, you're cleverer than me <laughs> in these things. I'm just a silly boy from Hackney. Right. Meanwhile, my app has downloaded and there's a chance for me to catch up. Where's the underscore on this keyboard? I can't find the underscore. Now, this is, this is ridiculous. Someone help me here. They've got to have uh, an underscore. They've got yeah. a hyphen. No, they will have. If you press and hold the hyphen, what happens? Look, I've got the keyboard here. I've got yeah, the, if you press it. and hold the hyphen. What, that there? Yeah, press and hold. Does, it, does that do it? Ah, good man. But then there's another problem that helps put me in the lead. Oh, I've got my bleeding password. Ah, now that's unfortunate. Ivor. I take advantage of his lordship's unscheduled pit stop and start composing my tweet. What's the... What is the Twitter password? Is so he's um, gone to find a minion who might have okay. remembered it for him. Ah. I changed it recently, because ah. hacker got in. Alan's back in the race. Now it's time to test the cameras and upload our photographs. If you look at me, fabulous. Right, let's take a picture of you. Have you sir? A picture of Image stabilisation means taking a high-quality picture should be child's play. Now, let's take a picture of me. Ha. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> On your right hand, where your finger is, that but no, your your right hand there. That one. I reckon. No. Yeah, could oh, be. Could it actually? I had written my tweet and hit send, but Lord Sugar battles on. Actually, it doesn't seem to have sent at all, which is slightly worrying. My tweet had got stuck in the system, letting his lordship back into the race. Mine's gone. Yeah, well, mine. I sent mine. See, mine times. is gone. Ah ah, 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 You have ah, sent it. Brilliant. Ah, well done. See, so-called geek. <laughs> this is the biggest comeback since Dunkirk. <laughs> Fantastic. It's gone. Well, this one just hasn't. Yeah, the old boy's done it. It's here. It is in black and white, in Technicolor. Yeah. Well, I should know better than to take on Alan Sugar at something technical, and I declare you the winner of this uh, particular competition. I am truly beaten by, by well, the Blue I mean, Baron. Yeah, nice enough phone, nice enough phone. But of course, no one will ever take you away from your love of Apple. <laughs> well, you're, you're a dedicated follower of fashion. I am. Kings would so say. Uh, you don't say of a dog how well, many you, tricks can it do. Yeah, but, you say how, how much do you love it. But right? what about but, their aerial conking out when you was part of the aerial on the iPhone 4? What about that one then? How'd they get out of that? Didn't conk out, they didn't if that was Amstrad, I'll tell you what, we would have been bloody slaughtered. <laughs> Anne Robinson <laughs> would have had me over the coals over that. You've put a product on the market and it doesn't work as a phone. It did work. You have to the put point is, it was all anti Apple propaganda. None of them were taken back. No, but there wasn't a single they, one taken they gave, back. They 
quickly made a plastic band to put around the bloody elastic band. Nobody used it. Nobody used it. That was nobody. Oh dear. But at least we've proved that these days even complex phones can be mastered in just a few minutes. Let's see what my followers have to say. About well, that's amazing. Oh, they want a photo together. All oh, right. Should we have a photo together? I think we better. We better satisfy them, haven't we? Yeah. And we're fighting with phones. Phone <laughs> fight. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. We look like a couple of villains, don't we? We look like, <laughs> yes, we we look like we're caging the joint here. <laughs> it's a horrible zone. Oh my god, <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm with Alan Sugar, the godfather of work gadgets. He's opened up his archives just for me to show off the retro devices made by his company that truly revolutionised how we worked. Like this word processor. That was a game changer, 1984, 1985. This was the transition from typewriters to yeah. word processing. 399 quid the whole With a dot lot. matrix printer. Offices bought them. Yeah. We really got caught with our trousers down and not realising. So you, you actually you didn't have enough, enough no. to go around, enough no, to no. sell? And then, then you got um, this rather sort of neat handheld sort of thing. The pen pad. See, yeah, that, this, that was ahead of its time. It was, yeah. This is, this is the first touch screen where you can um, write things on. Oh, we were so advanced, you know. Oh, my God. God. Eat your heart out, Apple. <laughs> now have a look at this. Believe it or not, it's what laptops looked like in 1992. Football journalists love this. Oh, right. They, they loved it. They took it to the game and yeah. they did da 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 And then in the early days of modems, they plugged something in there. Right. And, and Lineker scored its famous goal against whoever. <laughs> yeah. Lineker, straight, straight, straight to the copy desk, there, yeah. yeah. But there's another retro gadget in his office that's caught my eye. This here is the first iPod. <laughs> I know David Beckham couldn't sling it around his neck <laughs> yeah. and go jogging with it, but basically what it was was a way of putting all your music into one machine. Yeah. What you've got here is like a jukebox in the oh back there. Oh, my God, and that's for the CDs. So you put your CDs in there. As you put your CDs in, you press a couple of buttons, whatever it is, yeah. and you play, and it starts to play the thing. I think it's stunning. I actually love one. I think it's really if we put, if we put it's a, such if we, fun. If we put something down there, you can sling it round your neck. Yeah. <laughs> just With a big bliss. pair of cos headphones. <laughs> yes. And, of course, the market trader in his lordship can't resist trying to hawk his latest wares. This is a, um, a revolution in television. So, so what's different about this? Well, effectively, this is a free view box. But there's a significant difference. Whereas you go forward here seven days, which is not, nothing new. Right. OK. What you can do here is to... You see the time where we are yes. now? Now, we can go back seven days. To be fair, Virgin's TiVo already has this function on subscription and there are upfront costs for UView. All the major um, uh, broadcasters in Britain have subscribed to this system, well, haven't they? Well, so they're the shareholders. They are the actual yeah. shareholders. It's so the only company we're not I've advertising you by, by no, bigging no, up this system. No, no, system. it's the only it company the... I've been involved in where it, we're not, I'm not allowed to make a profit. <laughs> It's wonderful that you, you remember every detail of these, almost as if they're your children, and, and obviously you were not just the, the businessman selling them, but you were you know, a huge part of the, the input in actually designing yeah. them and calling for them to be made. Yeah, I mean, these are kind of like babies, if you like. Mm. Um, every, these were all, you know, they were born in, born in England, born yeah. in Brentwood. <laughs> yes, born in Brentwood. Born in Brentwood. The only way yeah. was Essex, then. Yeah, yeah, it was Essex, right. <laughs> and, my, and by the way, your mate, Apple, yeah. he, he, he's, he was born in Chinkford, down the road. He was, was Johnny Ive, yes. absolutely. He's a proud come, Essex boy. Only the good boys come from Essex. <laughs> it's right? true. All the innovators come from Essex, yeah. So, yeah. Even the train robbers, they came from Essex. <laughs> <laughs> they were very innovative. <laughs> There was one last set of innovations I wanted to show him, some stress-relieving gadgets I'd brought with me. Well, the real classic, the, the icon of executive stress relief is this good old Newton's cradle, isn't it? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Yeah. This was actually designed and brought into the market by a friend of mine called Richard Longcrane, who was a director on Tomorrow's World. <laughs> Very addictive. Yeah, but there are more, more expensive ones. I wonder if you'd be tempted to put these into your offices. We've got, I've got an extraordinary thing to show you now. Here's an ex executive stress reliever. Companies like Google are installing this kind of thing to refresh their staff. A sleeping pod. What Beautiful. is it? <laughs> it looks like an MRI scanner. It does look like a scanner, an MRI scanner. It comes equipped with a mattress, DAB radio and magazine rack. A true sanctuary. So can I tempt you in, Alan? 
No, absolutely really not? not. I mean, I don't care if Google do use them. They do. But maybe they were th well, the bloke who was in there when their share price dipped £18 billion pounds when he was in there. He had to go in there and relax. <laughs> so I get in and experience it? Well, you could do if you wish. I don't know. Well, it will do much. Um, um, well, that's, that's him gone, then. <laughs> I seem gone for the day. So it's pleasant enough. Relax. Take it easy. Take it easy. I'm just looking at your fifth 30 brain now. <laughs> well, the next question you're going to ask me is, would I have this in my organisation? The answer is no. No. Maybe I to guess may that. Maybe to store some archives in or something <laughs> like that. Um, inventor Tom, can you come oh, here? Oh, Tom, yes. Excellent. Hi. Get in there. Get in you're, there. You'll be tell me this, wouldn't you? Tell me if you you're inspired. Yeah. 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 Head, head, head first. Head yeah. first. Yeah. Oh. Right. This is actually quite nice. OK. It's it right. is, isn't it? I feel invention's coming, Lord Sugar. Yes. You see, okay, that? It's, it's inspired him already. Yes. Right. right, come on. Back well, to work. What you could do with this sort of a, a drawer or something. Yes. Anyway, don't get too excited, because we're not having one. <laughs> <laughs> Back to work. You can work. sleep on the floor as usual. I thought it wasn't very you. Well, I may not have tempted Lord Sugar to bunk off work, but my ultimate skive was fast approaching. The plan was to send a robotic version of me to a Video Games Awards that evening to hand out a gong, affording me the night off. 300 hours of sculpting and painting had produced a lifelike head made of silicon that uses real human hair from Russia and eyebrows made from, I kid you not, squirrel fur. Two half-horsepower electric motors drive the robot and state-of-the-art animatronic actuators move the mouth. I'll speak into a microphone and using an internet connection, my voice should be transmitted through the robot live to the audience, allowing me to do the bare minimum. The big night is upon us. Comedian Ed Byrne is playing host to 800 bloggers, technology journalists and games designers. It's a daunting audience for my robot. As the awards get underway, I await my cue. To present the handheld game of the year, I did, I did promise you that we were going to have some quite interesting presenters this year. I should be able to see and hear what's going on thanks to a camera buried in my robotic chest, and it will all be controlled via everyday Wi-Fi. The crowning glory is this, the world's most advanced robotic hand with 24 types of movement. One day, it will be used by bomb disposal experts and unmanned space missions. For now, I just hope this prototype is developed enough to shake the winner's hand. Well, here goes the moment of truth. It'll either be a triumph or I'll be laughed off the stage. <sighs> I'm actually rather nervous. Not for me, but for my double. And to present the award, we have a very special guest, but not quite like you've seen him before. Showtime. Hello. Good day to you all. And how is everyone? <laughs> Ed, my dear boy, how wonderful to see you here at the Golden Joystick Awards. And in their 30th anniversary, no less. How are you? You I, well? I, I'm very well indeed. I like it. The robotic look suits you, it has to be said. Thank you very much indeed. I do look good. Better than the real me, I reckon. This is genuinely Stephen Fry. He's controlling this, is watching you through a camera, and is speaking to you. I can prove this. Anybody want to ask a question live here? Anything at all? Anyone at all? Who is the president? Who is the president? <laughs> Barack Obama. It's proper time. So, we must get to the business at hand. Show me the name of the winner. Yes, I can see it through my robotic lenses. It's uncharted. Golden Abyss. Congratulations. Well, well done. There you are. Hello. Well done. Very worthy recipient. Would, would you like to shake my hand or lick me or fondle me? Anything you want. Absolutely fine by me. Fantastic. Well done, sir. Congratulations. Come in between. Let's have a photo. Let's have a... You, you, you stand... There we are. Well done. Well done. Thank you. I must be off now. So enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. No hanging around backstage. No talking to the client. 
It's the ultimate sky. There's no doubt that there are plenty of gadgets out there that make work less of a chore. But Fry 2 D2 is my favorite because it gives us a glimpse into the future. We spend 1,800 hours a year at work, and I'm now convinced we're just a few years away from robots being able to share the load. Oh, it's brilliant. Brilliant. Hello, I'm Stephen Fry, and I have adored gadgets ever since I was knee-high to a space hopper. Gadgets entertain us. They connect us. They educate us. They impress us. And, of course, sometimes they frustrate us. But whichever way you look at them, they make the world a, a much, much better, and dare I say, happier place. So, come into my world as I, along with some of my friends, reveal a feast of magnificent gadgets that will provide for a fun and stress-free existence. Ah, oh, it's taking me to a happy place. Consider me your humble servant, your knight in crumpled corduroy, your gadget man. Tonight, it's all about the gadgets whose sole purpose in life is to entertain us. Oh, yes, genius. Jeremy Clarkson will help me test the future of pub games. Whoa. Eat my balls. <laughs> and I'll be attempting to turn this building into the biggest video game the world has ever seen. We're about to make history. It's instinctive, isn't it? The moment you wake up, you reach for one of these. Not to send a text message or phone someone. In fact, those are considered rather old hat these days. They're about the fifth and sixth most used functions on smartphones. No, we surf the web, we check into our social networking sites, or we play a game. Whereas once it was birds singing that roused us from our slumber, now it's birds being angry. Over one billion people, one in every six of the world's population, have downloaded the Angry Birds game. Death. Angry Birds is all very well, but um, my current favourite's uh, a rather sort of more, I don't know, calming. It's got a solace about it. It's called Contre Jour, and it's, it's, it's a very elegant design. Very beautiful. You have, to, you have to make a hill for yourself and roll down it. Perfect. And yes, while gadgets have many practical uses... Good Lord. Excuse me. What they're best at is entertaining us. Today, even a bathroom can be fun. This futuristic mirror from Hong Kong doubles as a computer display equipped with Wi-Fi, letting you watch TV or browse the internet. One's ablutions have never been so enjoyable. I suppose the most obvious source of technological fun is a video game. It's an incredible $80 billion industry. That's bigger than the entire music business, and it's growing faster than Hollywood. I could play this kind of Atari console, which um, allows me to play classics like Missile Command and Asteroids and that sort of thing. Or I could be more up to the minute with an Xbox and go online and challenge some random American youth to see who can throw the most hand grenades. Take that, Ethan. Oh, no, I'm dead. But the charge that's often levelled against gadget-related fun is that it's so solitary and sedentary. But, you know, it doesn't have to be so. Where better for some sociable exercise than the park? Whoops, careful, sorry. I'm going to test some fun-time gadgets for the great outdoors. 
Well, it's the good old-fashioned municipal park where we come to get our exercise and, of course, to exercise man's best friend. But this man's best friends can be combined in one, not only the lovable dog, but and gadgets combined in these extraordinary animal gadgets. And uh, we're going to try them out with a willing crowd of canine and human testers. Let's see how they work. They're heavy enough, goodness me. Meet the guinea pigs, or rather guinea pooches. The first thing you do when you come with the park is play the standard game of fetch. You throw sticks and stuff. Well, just choose whichever one you want. See if your dogs respond. They're the judges, not you. Really. Man's best friend loves playing fetch, and there's a selection of devices available to liven things up. The Hyper Dog Tennis Launcher is essentially a catapult. Now watch, this? watch, What's watch this, watch, 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 What's this? watch, it, watch, look. Look at it. Oh, good, good boy, girl. girl. That's all right. We'll see. Hard to tell. Good girl. Yeah, I like this one. It shoots further than you can throw. So better exercise for the dog in that sense. Yes, absolutely. Place a tennis ball in this doggy driver and you can launch it like Tiger Woods. And <laughs> playing crazy golf. If all that's too much effort, then this automatic launcher from America might take your fancy. It can fire a ball 45 feet at the touch of a button. Look at it. Look at it. Yeah. Whoa, I got another one. Not everything I've brought along is a oh, hit. Too hard. Now, you probably wondered, like everybody, it's as old as Greek mythology, can animals speak and can we understand them? Here's an app that apparently can translate your dog. That's better. Analyzing now, and it's uh, saying, I'm feeling great. Great. Yeah. I'm sure Molly does think that. Right. Done. Did we get something? Analyzing that there could analyzing. be more. What's it saying? You shall be known as the idiot I live with. Oh, that's nice, Molly. <laughs> I'm going to try it to complete silence and test this app out. Right, it's now done and analysing. Five-second rule. If you're gone for five seconds, your food is mine. So, let's be honest, this bilingual dog translator is just somebody trying to make a fast buck from the app store. How surprising. <laughs> what a shame. Dr. Doolittle will have to remain uh, a children's book and not a reality. That is a shame. The safe stick is less prone to splintering and harbouring bacteria than the normal wooden affair, but Molly makes her thoughts on it quite clear. She's now peeing on it. <laughs> this is a disaster. Now, you may be wondering, where's my little pet? Well, I do have one, and he's very special. In fact, this is the first time he's ever been to Britain. Let's see what they make of him. This remote-controlled critter hails from California and is designed to be a toy for lonely canines. You operate him like so. It will do 20 miles per hour on even bumpy grass. As you can see, if you're a dog, it's clearly the next best thing to humping a sofa. They really are absolutely obsessed with it. There's one gadget I'd like to test, something to help when nature calls. Found a poo here I've been hunting for hours, and I'm using this extraordinary vacuum-powered dog do sucker upper. Oh, God, please work. Oh, oh, that's gruesome. Look, it's going in. But, oh, 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 good gracious. And then, of course, what do you do with it, you may ask? Well, you've got two feet and you... Do that. Oh, the smell is absolutely unspeakable. And there you have a little bag of, oh, no. And it sort of collars it up a bit, but it's just revolting. But, ah, the smell is not there. So look, follow me. We can put it away. Oh, ah, in you go. And goodbye. Thank you. I managed not to touch it. I think in the end, you know, a little shovel or a trowel or something would be better. That was pretty unpleasant. Now, before I leave the park, there's something I've been dying to have a go with. The 21st century version of a humble kite. Pilot fry, Blackhawk down, here we go. 
Yes. Oh, brilliant. Hover, hover, hover. This is the Parrot AR drone. You simply download an app to control it, and there's four rotors, a gyroscope, and an accelerometer to keep it all flying. There's also an HD video camera that records the in-flight action. Perfect for spying on your neighbors in their back gardens. Go and collect intelligence. I want to know about the enemy forces. Let's try a flip. Oh, yes, genius. Oh, God, I'm good. Oh, yes. All great fun, but what I'd like to do is find a way of making gadgety games much more social and put them on a much grander scale. So I thought, why not try and devise a game that was bigger, that was more social, that took place outside? And the answer, the world's biggest video game. First, I'm going to need a screen big enough to play it on, which means commandeering an entire building, the enormous Millennium Mills in London's Docklands. I've also set the Gadget Man Games Division to work, producing a bespoke game that can be played by a whole crowd of people via their mobile phones. Right now, what we're doing is we're um, setting up all the computers that will be doing the projection work and we'll also be testing the mobile connections that will be connecting to the game. If they can pull it off, we could be playing our way into the record books. In the meantime, I'm off to a local watering hole to test another batch of fun gadgets. Ah, the traditional English inn. What could be more conducive to fun and games than a selection of fine English ales, a ploughman's lunch, and a gentleman in the corner wheezing into an edition of the Racing Post? As a matter of fact, Henry VII legislated against pub games because he felt that they distracted his men from archery practice. Fortunately, nobody took a blind bit of notice, and the result was a torrent of uh, fruit machines, shove hateney, and quizzes. But what of the 21st century pub game, hmm? I'll need a glamorous assistant to help me investigate, of course. And here comes one now, Jeremy Clarkson. So, Jeremy, you're a, you're a gadget man like myself, aren't you? Hugely. Yep. Yes, if I see something, anything, I buy it immediately, and it never works, <laughs> ever, ever. Have you got the hot tap yet? This yes. Permanently delivers boiling water, and then you have people say, I'll just go wash my hands. Sure. <laughs> no! <laughs> I think a quick loosener is in order. Uh, you look like a man in need of a stiff drink. This office, Always. this has ten bottles fixed to it and is an automatic cocktail maker. Already? <laughs> I want it. <laughs> yes, you see? Wait, 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 banana oh. daiquiri. Have we got it? Uh, no, I'm afraid there isn't. There's, the closest would be a pina colada. Let's or... have a pina colada. All right, there we go. And we go OK. Designed primarily for pub use, you can buy one for the home too, and it takes around 60 seconds to automatically mix a perfect cocktail. The most important thing about this is the designer of it has fitted it with blue lights. Oh, yes, you're a fan of blue lights, aren't you? Blue light says gadget. So but that's important. That's important. And what about the actual taste? Do you think it, it beats the, um, the fancy schmancy um, well, I don't know. You'd mixologists? Need that, uh... You'd need Tom Cruise standing next to it to do a taste comparison, but it hasn't made something disgusting. No, well, that's good, exactly. Let's be honest. The result of a gadget isn't very important. No. The look of it is. It is entirely style over substance. And people who think that that's a bad thing mistake the matter. The style is the point. Let the games begin. First up, darts. We're going to use an app called KL Dartboard. As you can see, I've got three darts here. Yeah. You're holding a dartboard. Yeah. This is the magic of the modern world. Oh, we, we can sit there and have a drink and talk. But anyway, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk and play guard. darts. Oh, Yes, you can. Because it's all maths. The phone and tablet connect via Bluetooth. Oh. Right, oh, you don't, scored. You just moved the board. I thought it had gone a treble one, but it's it, just a one. Yeah, well, it's close to the treble 20. I'm in the right area. I don't know how you did it, man. It's a cheat. You big cheater. Throw a dart from your phone, and the accelerometers inside calculate the speed ah. and flight of the dart, so it's surprisingly realistic. Have you thrown all three? I've got one left. Oh, have you always seen Sorry, pay attention. Sorry. We're playing a game of 301, but that might be slightly optimistic. What goes between 10 and 4? Oh, uh, 18. Uh, sorry, it's, um, uh, six, uh, blah, blah, blah. What is oh, that? You have to go opposite. No. no. Is that uh, a 6? 15. No. 13. Is that a 6? It's 13. Then it's hiding. So you've got a double 6. So I think we say first double wins. 12. Otherwise, we'd be here forever. You have actually won that, <laughs> and I'm not bothered. <laughs> I've just thought of a brilliant new version of It's real darts. But Piers Morgan. <laughs> that would be good. Well, this, no. So you're not convinced, Joe? No. Well, there's another 
popular oh, yeah. indoor pub game. It's become popular in the last oh, 30 years. Let's try you upstairs. Follow me. Right. Well, I've always fancied myself as a bit oh, of a bit billions. of a hustler. So yes, billiards. Are you good? Mm, no. It's like I ski. People go, look at that man, he's wearing skiing clothes, he's on a mountain <laughs> wearing skis, but that's not skiing. It's much the same with this. Fair enough. So, off you go. Stripes or what are they called? Uh, spots, I think. Not solids. Not solids, I didn't call them solids. Whoa! Eat my balls! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Just as I planned. <laughs> well, this is more as I planned. I prepare to be amazed. I have electronic augmented reality on my side. Yeah. Now, let's hope this oh works. Look my at this. God. Uh, Some scientists from Queen's University in Canada came up with this amazing prototype training device to make potting balls easier. Oh, look at that! Cameras above the table feed the position of the balls and cue to a computer which works out the angles and projects guidance onto the table to help you line up each shot. The pockets go green when you've lined up correctly, and it also shows the predicted path of the cue ball afterwards, helping with the positioning for the next shot. Ah. Oh. There, it's gone green. Oh. Yes! yes! To see if the technology really works, I'm playing with the help of the machine, while Jeremy's using old-school hand-eye coordination. So I use it without technology. I've got to get that stripey part in. Yeah. Oh! Eat my oh. shot. It certainly helped my game, but one thing the gadget can't do is stop your opponent playing well. How unfortunate. You've been hiding your light under a bushel all these years. I genuinely don't understand this. <laughs> the technology is impressive, but it was good old-fashioned luck that decided the game. Side on this. Do you have Jeremy's side? foul on the black meant yeah. I won. <laughs> black is in. I believe that is the end of the game. Um, well, thank you very much. Um, technology pleasure. did come to my aid in an important way. I like the start things, thing, yeah. and I'd buy it just so <laughs> that I could go, watch this. <laughs> then I wouldn't know how it worked, and we'd then go and have a cocktail from the machine with the blue lights. Exactly, and we might watch television. And as you probably know, like everything else, televisions almost every six months improve themselves. <laughs> Could this extraordinary glasses-free 3D telly be the future of TV? Feast your eyes on lenticular 3D HD TV. Well, just my eyes, sadly, everybody watching at home isn't able no, to see the three-dimensional nature of it. What's interesting is it actually has a camera at the bottom, rather like a sort of connect or something might have a camera. What it does is it can detect up to nine pairs of eyeballs. So what it's doing is actually adjusting the image to your own eyeballs so that it oh, appears really? so 3D. It's... So, yeah, it is actually reading you and giving you a particular slant of the pixels such that you might get a, a no 3D image. No way. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. It is extraordinary that you can watch it without glasses, because obviously you don't have to feel foolish wearing those glasses. Even if they look like sunglasses, they're a bit silly, aren't they? No, you look silly. So let's imagine we're playing a quiz game and you've won the star prize, which is whichever one you choose of what we've had today. So that can be the cocktail mixer. Mm -hmm. It can be the darts and the dartboard, my lovely. Family toy. All right, my lovely, yeah. And it can be, it can be the augmented reality pool, my darling. Barbecue okay, set. Okay, my lovely, yeah. 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 And or are can... you being Derek Beatty? <laughs> I don't quite, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I actually have the cocktail machine, because, of course, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> but no, I'd like to, actually. Blue yeah. light's very good. And the blue light. That's yours to keep. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now, playing around with your mates in the pub is obviously sociable, but it's nothing compared to what we're about to see. It's time for our attempt to create the biggest, most social video game in the world. My team of Gadget Man eggheads have been designing and building a game that should let lots of players join in on a massive scale. But will it all work? The plan is to turn this disused warehouse into the world's biggest TV screen. But how? The answer is to project across using uh, six of these babies. They're enormous, two banks of three. They're about 40 times more powerful than the kind of projector you'd use in a typical home cinema. And they need to be, because they've got to throw across 200 metres of Thames water onto the facade of the famous old flour mill. This is the first time we've worked at such a large scale in a building. It's quite surreal seeing your own graphics up on the building 100 feet tall. So, we've got some scale, now I need to make it social. 
I put out a call to action on Twitter asking for some volunteers to help me, and a keen bunch soon turned up to find out what on earth was going on. Well, I'm here at Mission Control, and you can see here the, the grid is um, divided into 40 squares, randomly distributed amongst them are five glowing keystones, and the aim is to find and destroy those. The game is rather like a giant multiplayer version of battleships, but here every player in the team has to hit a keystone for it to be destroyed. Once all the keystones have been blown up, the building will collapse and the game is won. So the race is on to uncover the squares and find the keystones. Kind of like battleships, but in a stream. Yeah, but better, and on a building on a massive scale. I love the whole sort of thing where it's like massive projector. It just brings a whole new element to the game, really. The players are split into two teams. I'll be in Team 1, who'll be playing on the left-hand side of the building. Team 2 will play on the right. Short ones at the front, tall ones at the back. That's a good, good system. With 50 players logged onto a web address via their smartphones, the system seems to be holding up, and they're ready to tap in their moves. All right, are you ready? Yes. yes. We're about to make history. This is the world's biggest computer game. So, lights, camera, let's play! Top left, okay, who's going for top, top left? left? That was me. Okay, okay two search, one, two, I'll search, two wheels. I'll hit the target. Go on, let's focus on that, guys. One, two, three, go. A couple of people kind of assumed, like, leadership roles and just kind of said, right, you guys do this, this and this, and then we'll all do this. Anyone can get that, second line in, third up. Go. So you can see that one's glowing up there. Oh, there's one glowing in the box. That's a keystone, yeah, definitely. We all kind of rallied together and got it, and it worked really well. Oh, they've got another one. Go on, Team 2, you're doing hopelessly. You're way behind us. Despite my efforts to derail them, four minutes into the game, there's nothing between my team on the left and Team 2 on the right. This is going to be close. Oh, it's, it's tense. Far right, second down. You see that one? That's a brilliant one. I know, it's like stressful. Oh, I know, it's really tense. Isn't it? The trick is to stay focused and calm amongst all the noise and excitement, but that's far from easy. Oh, dear. Oh. Very, very close. They're just. Oh. Let's go. Oh, oh, my goodness, there. I think they're beating Congratulations! Very close, well, though. My goodness. I think we can call this game a success, though, can't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It actually engaged us enormously. We cooperated, we communicated. It was a lot better than just being alone remotely in a locked, smelly room with a no entry <laughs> sign on it and a black t shirt and a weird name. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's really into multiplayer games. They're, you know, the future already. So something like this, where you get to utilise like a really big space and people all coming together, it was so much fun that I can definitely see this taking off in the future. This is only the very, very dawn of the whole co concept. Yeah. You know, I would totally go on a team. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I think it has genuine. <laughs> it has a genuine yeah. future. The concept has been proved. Taking a computer game into the open and playing it on a massive scale has been an unmitigated success. It's been sociable, inclusive, and has turned entertainment into an event. Believe me, you have just watched the next big thing in having fun. That, in my book, is mission accomplished. Hello, I'm Stephen Fry, and I have adored gadgets ever since I was knee-high to a space hopper. Gadgets entertain us. They connect us. They educate us. They impress us. And, of course, sometimes they frustrate us. But whichever way you look at them, they make the world a, a much, much better, and dare I say, happier place. So, come into my world as I, along with some of my friends, reveal a feast of magnificent gadgets that will provide for a fun and stress-free existence. Ah, oh, it's taking me to a happy place. 
Tonight, it's all about the gadgets that will make you fit, healthy and beautiful with the bare minimum of effort. Well, this is a good move. You are throwing some shapes here. <laughs> I'll get a gadget facelift from Essex's favourite beautician. Amy Charles has done that nose for you. <laughs> I've got an Amy Charles nose. And I'll try to build a fitness machine that will let even an old pudding like me beat an Olympic champion. Is that not cheating? <laughs> <laughs> You ever wake up feeling you'd had a horrible night's sleep? Well, now the Zio Sleep Manager tracks your every move and can uh, confirm it. You wear this headband to bed. Sensors then turn the electrical signals produced by your brain into a graph, which you can analyze in the morning. Green bars indicate periods of good sleep, blue is light sleep, and red shows when you were awake. And there's far too much red there for my liking. My morning health check continues with these Wi-Fi scales, which shame you into dieting by publishing your weight directly to Twitter. I hate you. There's one final innovation that can tell you what sort of shape you're in, the Cardio app. It uses your phone's camera to measure your pulse by analyzing how much light is reflected off your face. Then, it estimates your life expectancy. Terrifying new exclusive. I'm going to live till I'm 68 years old. I've got 13 years left on this planet. Super. Nice to know. <sighs> I wonder, in the world of gym technology, if there isn't some fitness gadget that might help me, perhaps even, push the barriers and make it to 70. Right, well, I'm off to the gym, and I'm going to go on my Ferrari. Eight million people now belong to gyms, and of that eight million, 67% don't even bother going. Isn't that extraordinary? I think one of the reasons is the simple dullness of the machines. They're so boring. A minute seems to be an hour. Surely some gadget can make working out fun at home, can make it venturesome, a game even, enjoyable. It's a thought, let's find out. I'm meeting three fitness fanatics to help me test some gadgets that promise to make that quest for a longer life and perfect body a little bit more achievable. Firstly, there's BitGym, a free app which takes the boredom out of gym exercise by giving you a virtual view to look at. So, I'm now cycling past some people. Move. You simply rest a tablet or phone on a treadmill or exercise bike. Your device detects the vibrations and speeds up or slows down the footage accordingly to keep the experience realistic. The harder you push, the faster you travel through the virtual world. Do you think that... Helps you? Do you think that kind of actually yeah. motivates you to, do, to exercise more? I, I felt really relaxed. I felt like I wasn't riding the bike. I was just enjoying where I was going in the... That's the key, isn't it? And girls? Be nice to get a beach one. Let us ah. know you on the beach. That'd yes, be nice. wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Ipanema yeah. or something like that. Yeah, Absolutely. Definitely. Lots of Not boys in rather skimpy outfits. <laughs> yeah. Or girls. Our next workout comes courtesy of a console game, Zumba Fitness Core. Zumba! <laughs> it tones your body and builds stamina through a selection of dance routines. More likely to bust a hip than bust a move, I'm letting Zoe and Sarah take the lead. Oh, I'm impressed. Oh, with our moves or with the machine? No, yours. <laughs> hot. Hot. Am I looking hot? Woo. These are good moves. You are throwing some shapes here. <laughs> We're trying. The Xbox Connect camera tracks your shimmying in real time. The more accurately you replicate the Zumba moves shown on screen, the more points you score. I'm very oh. impressed. Do you think it's the kind of thing you would do if you had it at home? If yeah, I had, definitely. definitely. It's really definitely. good fun to do with your friends. Also, yeah. if you want to pull a workout, yeah, just two, two minutes around. Because what, for me, is so great about this whole new side to getting fit is that you can be involved in a story. I mean, to me, the ideal treadmill would be a James Bond adventure where I was being chased for a villain or I was chasing a villain. 
And, uh, you know, I could actually move and yeah. hide around corners and do stuff. <laughs> Instead of just going... Uh, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sure this will happen more and more. My final offering is the Nexus's virtual sparring partner. It's exhausting! It's so... <laughs> OK, hang on. OK, you, you take up the next one minute 30. Keep going. Make, oh, he's gone already. The seven red pads contain accelerometers and information about how hard you hit them, how accurate you are and how many calories you burn are displayed on the screen. Oh, terrific, OK. Can you turn his tummy red? Yes. You don't turn, I've never that turned a man's tummy red. <laughs> you have your chromosome to defend now. This pro model costs £6,000, but there's also a domestic version available for half the price. His head. Three, two, one, zero. Listen, that was really good. <laughs> if you weren't like a, a hedge fund dealer or someone with limited money, would you have one of these at home? 100%. 100%. In 30 seconds, I'm as tired as I am after about an hour in the gym. It's a hell of a workout, isn't it? It is, yeah. Raise your right hooking arm if that's a yes to this machine, then. <laughs> so, we've seen how gadgets can help you work out more efficiently. Now, here's something that can take the hardship of exercise away altogether. This is the Tyrannosaurus Rex of treadmills. It is to treadmills what John Braddon was to cricket, what Chateau Kem is to wine, what Stephen Fry is to light comedy. It is simply the master. What's so special about it? Well, you start it up like any other. I don't know if you can see this swelling up. It's quite extraordinary. It's like an Edwardian woman's skirts ballooning underneath her. Whoa, going up in the air onto my tippy toes. Using technology developed to train NASA astronauts, this treadmill increases the air pressure around the lower half of your body to support your weight. I'm now at 69 percent, 68, 67, 66. They reckon 62, 61 is when you really feel rather weird, and believe me, I do. I can feel that my feet are touching the ground. They're moving in a very different way. I'm not going to go down to the maximum, which is 20. And that's insane. I'm actually skipping on my toes. Weird. Used by top sports teams like Arsenal, the feeling of weightlessness encourages a greater range of movement and reduces the impact on joints. You're still burning the calories, but what you're doing is improving your hips and your knees' life expectancy. So you can go further and faster somehow. I wonder if there's a way of harnessing that in a race and winning. Maybe cheating, but... Yes, I think that's what I'll do. Build myself some kind of super gadget that will propel me faster than I could otherwise go. And I'll test it by challenging one of Britain's greatest ever athletes. And I know just the woman. It's my old friend and double Olympic gold medalist, Dame Kelly Holmes. Hey, Kelly. Hello. Um, listen, it occurred to me that you would be the ideal person to challenge to a race. Now, <laughs> you probably know I'm not the fastest man in the world, but... I have a gadget that I think might put me on equal terms with you using my own pedal power. Are you, are you up for it? Oh, gosh, OK. I better get shaking in <laughs> Fantastic. I'll see you in a few days, and we'll make it as public as possible. How about Trafalgar Square? Oh, perfect. It, <laughs> it's a deal. Oh, okay. I wouldn't be too frightened. <laughs> Lovely seeing you. Bye. Bye. Well, there we go. It's a fait accompli. It'll happen and may the best athlete win, or rather, may the best, best devised gadget win. The Gadget Man Athletics Division are on the case, converting a traditional gym treadmill into something that will save me years of training and hopefully make me a match for Dame Kelly in a race. Of course, getting fit is just one part of achieving the body beautiful. It's also rather lovely if you can look fit as well, and there are any number of ways that you can help yourself look more beautiful. Did you know the average British woman spends over £130,000 in her life on cosmetic products?
And what better woman to help me investigate some of these products than the nation's favorite Essex girl, Amy Childs. Amy, hello. Hi, Isn't Stephen. It? I know that everything you do is state-of-the-art beauty, from your fingernails to your fingertips. Um, um, but I thought you might like to see some of these, which are a little bit older than the old. Do you know what these are? My nan's actually got a pair of these still. Has she? And yes. I still use them. Well, there you are. They still work. Have you seen one of those? Not really, no. Better not mess my hair up, Stephen. I yeah, wouldn't dream of being held responsible for that. Mm, yes, it's on. Do? Dries your hair. Lie down and let you loose. Have a nice no, relax. Uh, thank you. I'll have a nice relax. <laughs> Stephen, are you nice and comfortable? Blissfully, thank the you. The first stage of my gadget facelift involves the Wrinkle MD. This treatment is amazing for anti-wrinkle. I think this is a good treatment because some people kind of fall Botox and it's actually quite relaxing. Yes, I don't think I'd ever get for Botox. The patches infuse the skin with hyaluronic acid. Close your eyes, Stephen. It works deeper than a normal cream you rub in and will apparently smooth over the cracks in a 40-minute session. How's it feeling? It's tingling extraordinarily. It's a nice feeling. And you're relaxed? Very relaxed. OK. Next one. It's not that relaxing. OK. Oh, my goodness. This Japanese invention is called the Beauty Lift High Nose. If you think you've got a wonky nose, this is going to straighten it out in no time. OK. My nose now. <laughs> there, bend. See? Bend. It's going to look like you've had a nose job huh. in about okay. five minutes. OK, so just what I'm going to do... You use it every day, and its vibrations are supposed to stimulate the nasal bone and give you a surgery-free nose job. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's vibrating. It's tickly. Thank goodness I haven't got a cold or I'd sneeze. OK, so the next one is amazing for cheekbones. People want really high cheekbones now, yeah. and it really lifts your skin, so it's really quite high. Yeah. A lot of people have, as I said, cheek implants. The cheek implants are about £5,000. Oh. So this is quick and easy, and will give you, they say, an amazing oh, tightening treatment. Oh, I see, so it pulls, yeah. pulls me up like that. Good gracious. Ten minutes of facial exercise a day with the Horizon face mask on is apparently enough to keep sagging cheeks at bay. Meanwhile, Amy's found something else to beautify. You better have nice feet, Stephen. Oh, well, they should be fresh and clean, if not nice, but... Do you know what? I love doing feet. I'm a massive feet person. Oh, good. So, Stephen, this is your Pedi Pro. Oh, this is amazing goodness. for hard skin. Oh, yes. Oh, this is gorgeous, though. It's rotating oh. micro crystals. Oh, good gracious. Oh, that burns. <laughs> Is that tickling you? It burns on the toes. It was lovely. It on means the feet. it's working. Oh, that's good. With the dry skin on my feet shaved off, there's time to test one final treatment non surgical liposuction with the cavi sculpt. It claims results in just 30 minutes, so let's compare me before and after. And we read the terrible news is uh, 42, actually, 42 inches. OK. It's nice, enormously fat, isn't it? This machine is designed for home use. It uses ultrasound to break down stubborn fat cells. So people have this on their bum, oh, on their thighs. Heavens. And the fat molecules are then, how shall I put this, passed out the next time one visits the lavatory. But how do you keep in shape, though? Do you, do, you, do you use these treatments and eat well and exercise? I use everything. I eat sensible, I tone, I train. Yeah. But when you have this treatment done, oh. I'd recommend after to eat sensible, drink loads of water, yeah. not to go and have McDonald's or KFC. No, quite. Eat properly is the key, isn't it? Have you ever had any work done to your face? I had a little bit of lip surgery. Oh, only yeah. a little bit, because I like a bit of a pout. I like yeah. a bit of a, you know, when you have pictures done. I had quite big lips anyway. So it was enough? I have had my um, boobs done. Have you? Yeah. Oh, well, I, was, I was 18. But at least you haven't ever done it. That's the embarrassing thing. It's when people get addicted to it, don't they? And then they... I'm they become addicted. they become embarrassing. And, and I would never be addicted. No. Never in a million years would I be addicted. So do you have treatments done? Do you have your eyebrows waxed? Do you no, have? I'm I don't. I mean, sometimes if I'm staying in a hotel and there's a spa, I'll go and have a hot stone massage or something. Be I like that. Very lovely. Um, but not much else. 
With our 30 minutes up, has the Culvis gulp shaved off any inches? That's bizarre. That is 41 and a half. I told you it must be in how much? Half an inch? Yeah. You, well, that is still, lucky, that's still still better. That, that, that's bizarre. I can't it, bro. Anyway. At least you, you've, looked, you've lost half an inch. Waistline tightened, it's time to see whether my facial adornments have worked their magic too. How does that feel? It feels fine. It feels Do you nice. feel a bit tight? Um, yes, I can feel where it's pulled. You know, okay. it's definitely pulled off at that. Right. You might have a new nose now. <laughs> All my life I've dreamt of such a thing. <laughs> How's my nose look? Good. Look at that. Amy Charles has done that nose for you. <laughs> I've got an Amy Charles nose. And has Amy cured my crinkles? Do you know what I can honestly say? You yeah. look really good here. Oh, no. You actually look like you've had a bit of yeah. Botox, can I say? All right. Would you have it done again? Certainly. Like in a New York minute, as they say. Perfect. That's wonderful. Back at the Gadget Man workshops, the finishing touches are being made to my fitness super gadget. Something that should let me dodge years of training and instantly give me the ability to beat double Olympic gold medalist Dame Kelly Holmes. Our 100-metre race will be staged in London's Trafalgar Square. It's the ideal arena to demonstrate that gadgets can make fitness fun and, most importantly, easy. But what I hadn't reckoned on was hundreds of spectators turning up to watch me prove the point. Dame Kelly Hello, Holmes, how are you? Time. Well, Favourite heroine, how are you? you? I'm very well, thank you. Trembling I'm... in your boots, I hope. Oh, yes. Well, I've been training for this moment, Stephen. At high altitude. So I hope you have. Oh, yeah. The roof of your house. <laughs> Absolutely. Be afraid, be very afraid. <laughs> but before any great race comes the warm up. That's what we got here. Gosh. There are some wow. which I'm far too ethical to use. This one here. Yep. I could have gone away with, with roller skates on the front, and, um, but it's got, a, it's got a battery under okay, there. Okay, so no, would, no cheating. That would no be cheating. cheating. These I couldn't quite get the hang of. These are interesting. I had to go on these. These Please. are the Marway 700C roller skis. Were you successful? Well, they're supposed to take you near to 30 kilometres easily per hour. Yeah. I got very near to the pavement and I <laughs> fell over. Fortunately, not on camera, because it was an embarrassing sight. <laughs> They're just not for me. I want Kelly to try out my favourite gadget from the cavalcades of devices available on the high street that you can strap to your feet. These, I think, you know. Do you want to have a go? So, yeah, I think I'm these are the that. large ones. Okay. These are the kangoo jumps, and they're billed as the world's lowest impact shoes. These were developed in the physiotherapy arena because yep. people who had injured themselves, they could exercise and build up muscles without impact. Yeah. As you know, one of the things about jogging is it's a very high impact thing, especially urban jogging. These are hard work as well. I yes, say, they are. Really That's what's so clever, work. is that you spend all the calories and you do all the cardiovascular work that your doctors would approve of, but with 80% less impact on your knees. 80%? 80%. Really? So, That's great, so you, isn't it? You, you get a really good workout for far less damage <clears> to your body. <laughs> and then we go, that's it. Hey. And then we can then start jumping. running around. You see, it's, it's good, isn't it? It's a good feeling. It, really, <laughs> it feels really fun. Okay. As you run, the springy plastic base compresses, cleverly absorbing your impact on the ground. Oh, well, these are right. These are good. They're fun, aren't they? Don't think they're toys, either. They're based on a science called rebounding that produces fat and increases agility. <laughs> So that's a really... I really love these. They're, they're brilliant, fun, aren't they? they? Really it's a good. really cushiony, yeah. comfortable feel. Yep. And you're it's doing a brilliant the brilliant workout. The same distance covered is yeah. expending the same calories, but it just doesn't yeah. feel like it. I'm exhausted. <laughs> the warm-up's over, so it's time to reveal my ultimate running gadget, the thing that will hopefully propel me past a professional. I want all of the glory with none of the training. I think you should see what you're up against. Yep. This is my. I'm up for this. This is my super gadget, the Gadgetto di Tutti Gadgetti. Um, I call it the, the Fry <laughs> Treadmaster Deluxe. No, right. <laughs> now you may say that's just an ordinary I'm, treadmill. Is that not cheating? <laughs> no, it's cause my own feet that power it. After okay. all. Okay. My engineering team have modified the treadmill so that any running motion on the belt spins a set of gears which should magnify my efforts and quickly drive the wheels. Does it have brakes? That's a brake. Was, <laughs> was it you stopping? It's basically okay. a bicycle brake. Wow. 
And with the steering column added, I can drive my chariot wherever I want. I'm optimistic and yet at the same time... Yeah. ..quite desperately afraid. A lot of children that are <laughs> shouting my name, <laughs> which makes it very, very disturbing. Stephen Fry! Stephen Fry! Stephen Fry! OK, so it's literally start to finish. That's the idea. We have to first to breast the tape, I believe is the phrase. We're under starter's orders. Kelly's looking confident, but with that partisan crowd on my side, I'm ready for anything. I should be able to destroy them. <laughs> Eat my dust, you dame. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on, Oh, no! Come on! Come on! Done. <laughs> Gold to you, silver to me. Well, oh my, it went quite fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I have to say, I was expecting just a little <laughs> more competition, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid my prototype wasn't really up to the job. The principle was sound, but my humble calves needed an easier gear to make a quick getaway. Well, take Kelly Holmes. You have to have a medal for that supreme performance. Thank you. Man versus machine, mankind, I should say. And you won, oh. womankind. I'm sure this is the most precious medal you've ever won. Well, I think it's the easiest medal <laughs> I've ever won, Stephen. I was expecting just a little bit more challenge, but it's kept my pride That's as important. an Olympian, so uh, uh, I'm very happy. I'm happy too. Thanks for taking Thank part. <laughs> Ah, well, clearly there are plenty of gadgets and machines out there that can help me rebuild and reshape my body, but there's one essential ingredient that's missing, and that's the will for me to make myself fit. And until they can come up with a gadget that makes me want to be an elite athlete, then I'll just have to carry on trying to cheat my way to sporting greatness. Hey-ho. Hey-ho.